Hello everyone and good evening. Uh, today we want to talk to you about abiding in Christ. In this year of individual transformation, a key element that we need to step into is our abiding. Our theme scripture for tonight is John 15, 4. It says, Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus often gave instruction directly to his disciples or the apostles. There were no other crowds around, um, and this was meant specifically for them. Um, certain things that they would need for themselves to become the leaders that they would become in the church. There were no masses of people, as I had said, during these time frames, and his apostles that he chose were the only ones there. He wanted those that he spent the last three years with, training them up in what he wanted them to know and what to expect and how they want, he wanted them to follow his word, the preachings that he was giving, the teachings that he was giving. So these instructions were detrimental to the apostles. Moving forward, in one teaching, Jesus gave these instructions. And we're going to go back to our theme scripture, but we're going to go through from uh, John 15, 4 through 7. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now I want you to notice the phrase that is used in this teaching. Abide in the vine. Now, he didn't say abide on the vine. Mm -hmm. It's abide in it. And there's a specific reason for that. This must have meant something specific to Jesus and why he said it this particular way. Because it is regarding something for us to abide or to remain in on the vine. To remain in the vine. We do not just simply sit loosely on the top of the vine unattached and not part of it. We must be in it and it is in us to be changed for the fruit to grow mm. according to what Jesus has in store for us moving forward as a church. Mm. Now on a real vine, if the branches that are on there and, and there's no fruit going, let's just say the, the, there's damage to the, the branch, right? So what happens with the plant when it's damaged? If, if a part of the plant is damaged, like right here, the end of it is not getting any nutrients. So nothing happens. You know, uh, we have a couple of fruit trees in our backyard, and we've seen that happen over the years, where something got damaged and no fruit was was growing on that particular branch because the branch was damaged okay. and it was not getting the nutrients that it needed. That's good. So we need to look at that as we look at what Jesus is instructing his disciples to do and what this actually means. So that, that is true, that in abiding in Christ, and if we do not receive what we need to feed us, fruit cannot grow. That's right. And we cannot grow in Christ to become what he intends us to become as Christians and as ministers in his kingdom. Taking a look at 
the passage that we just read, um, in John 15, the word abide appears 10 times in the first 11 verses. That to me tells me it's important to abide, to remain attached to him. And I, find, I love it because it's John's word of intimacy. When he talks about getting closer or experiencing more, he says, you must learn to abide. I have to abide with him. John laid his head on the breast of Jesus because he wanted to abide with him even more. And this year, we've talked a lot in the minister's meetings and in our church about the call that we want for fruit, praying for the fruit, praying for the fruit, and us not, not everybody stepping into that. And that's exactly why is because we've become somewhat detached. Mm-hmm. That that fruit bearing branch, just like uh, Brother Robert just said, be, may be damaged. You may have gone through something. The winds may have blown it, blown Ooh. you the right way, and Ooh. maybe knocked you off a little mm-hmm. bit. But God says, if you choose to abide in me, I can All reattach right. that. Mm-hmm. If you've ever yes. seen, if mm-hmm. you've ever been mm-hmm. part of a agricultural project uh-huh. oftentimes there's a mending that can yeah, happen right, right. where they yeah. graft something yeah. in or yeah. there's a transplant where they'll take something from one Ooh. plant and move it onto another and graft uh-huh. it in and then that part becomes stronger it strengthens and then that's right. when that nutrients begins to transfer even though it wasn't originally part of the branch mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it still provides that nutrient once it, once it became and started to abide uh, thank you with that and it started to bear fruit and it started to grow and cultivate and be able to transplant others through the pollen and all of that and when we start to bear fruit there's three characteristics of fruit i want to take a look at first is fruit bears the character of its tree so oftentimes you think oh i'm not bearing any fruit i'm not bearing any fruit no it's saying you're bearing wrong fruit you're bearing the bad fruit, the sour fruit. Have you ever bought, bitten into something and you're like, oh, this was bad. This is too sour. It wasn't ripe. It wasn't ready. Oftentimes, that's what happens when we, when we try to do something when we're not called to do it. Mm-hmm. Or when we're trying to just go through the motion and all of that effort is for nothing. Mm-hmm. All right. You won't find apples on orange trees. Mm-hmm. You won't find anything where it wasn't supposed to be, where it wasn't planted and abiding in God, the character of the tree determines the nature of the fruit. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it yourself, your character determines the fruit that other people see. The second characteristic of fruit is your fruit is always visible. Mm. There's never been invisible fruit. (laughs) (laughs) There's never been invisible fruit. If you bear fruit, others will see it. Right, yes. Wow. It looks like something, uh-huh. like Pat, yeah. <laughs> like Linda said. It looks like something. Yeah, right. Fruit is always visible. <clears throat> and the third characteristic is fruit is always exists for the benefit of someone else. Mm-hmm. I'm going to repeat that. Your fruit wow. always exists for the benefit of someone else. Mm-hmm. Fruit doesn't eat itself. Mm. Come on. Yeah, fruit right. doesn't eat itself. I've never seen a self devouring apple. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, she's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen a rotting apple, but well, I've never yeah. seen yeah. Okay. a self devouring apple. Come on. Why did it rot? Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, uh. So, those three characteristics are fruit bears the character of its tree, mm-hmm. your fruit is always visible. And fruit always exists for someone else. When we pray and ask for God to give us the fruit, send us the fruit, it's not for personal gain. Right. You have to remember that, yes, it, God's going to use you to do something, but it's not for you. And oftentimes our own self-righteousness gets in the way of that fruit mm-hmm. being blooming. Because he says, oh, I want it because I want to show everybody that I can bear fruit. Uh-huh. But then yeah. God's like, you're not ready for that. That's going to be the bitter apple that someone takes in and walks out right out the door because they couldn't absorb it. It was hard to swallow. Mm-hmm. Right now. But when your fruit is truly because I want to help someone else, I want to provide that right. nutrients yeah. that that yes. person yes. needs, that's when that fruit is going to be bo- that's right. born. That's when that cultivated relationship where it says that apple is like that perfect, crisp, 
apple that just is mouth watering and you want to take another bite and you want some more you're like let me go back to that tree because i want to pick three more apples right. because it was wow. so satiating that i want more of it hallelujah that foodie in me that's like, I want to go back. I need a whole truckload because I'm not missing out on any of this. Mm -hmm. And that's when that true fruit happens. And every time I think of that, I think of Mother Morgan. Oh, yeah. Because that was the fruit that everybody wanted to be part of. Everybody wanted yeah. to just sit there and yeah, just be, yeah, yeah. abide with her because that fruit was just so sweet. Yeah. That love was so pure mm -hmm. because you wanted that. You wanted to remain in that. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the fruit God is calling us to. We have to change the character of the tree so our fruit can change its character mm -hmm. as well. Right. We have to abide in Christ and allow that abiding to change our character of our tree. And in order to grow in that, you have to grow when you're abiding in him. Now, we wouldn't know anything about fruit, anything about Jesus at all, if it weren't for the preaching, the teaching, and us devouring this right here the wow. word of god Amen. this is our instruction manual this is tells us everything we need to know about what we're going to become because of what jesus wants us to become right. according to his perfect will in us Amen. and we can't do that if we don't know this nice. so let's turn to romans chapter 10 Verse 14, that's if you guys are turning there. But Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. Now we can, we can also grow by reading the word. And the Holy Ghost, as we are reading the Word, can fill us in and give us... That. We know that the Holy Ghost gives us understanding as we read the Word. Mm -hmm. But you have to want to understand it. Right. You have to go in reading, saying, Lord, help me to understand what I'm reading here. Mm -hmm. And it is only through that understanding that He can then instruct us through His Word on a private level on an intimate level, on right. in a way that is specific to you, especially in this year mm -hmm. when we're having this individual transformation occur within us, it is individual. It's specific to myself. It's right. specific to Sister Renee and Sister Terry and that. And we need to remember that when we're reading the Word and asking God for the understanding. How does this apply to me? Right. What do I need to do? With this word, Lord God, give me understanding. I also want to look at 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 12 and 13. It states, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Amen. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Again, we're going right back to the word of God. And it, it, it is the spiritual word that we need to be manifested within ourselves. So that we can grow, develop, and become the person that God wants us to be. The Christian that... God wants us to be. That connection that he wants to have with us on an individual basis, yep. as well as the many ministers that are sitting in this room, become the minister that God wants you to be. Amen. And that. So we can grow by studying the word ourselves, much like what this panel has done in preparing this particular word. We study. Second Timothy 215. Everybody should know this one. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As teachers of a Bible study, we have to learn this first. Right. Same thing with the preacher. When a preacher studies the word and God has given it to them, they have to accept it for themselves and how it changes them first. Right. 
Pastors often said behind the pulpit, oh yeah, I've had this for a while. I've had to deal with this. I can't wait to give it to you. And so it's off of my plate. And the same thing with us as teachers. I'll, you know, um, I said it to uh, Sister Terry in a meeting we were in early. I said, I can't wait to get this off of our plate because it's tearing me up. <laughs> and I'm glad it's tearing me up because it's changing me. It's changing yeah. us. You, us three will never be the same Thank because you. of what we studied in God's word. And we're hoping that as we move forward in bringing this to you, that you will never be the same when you leave this room. That's right. Have that at the forefront of your mind as you hear what God has in store for us. So then we are given the task of this person of information to you, as we had said, so that you too can be fed, you can grow, you can get the nutrients that you need so that you can grow. Speaking of studying, um, um, I'm a big one for Strong's, as you guys know, and sometimes they go a little overboard, <laughs> and I promise I did not do that this time, but I, I look through this, this whole scripture that we started with in, uh, in John 15, 4 through 7, and I looked at every word and, and asked, asked God, what do you want me to do with this information? Because it was enlightening for me. Some of the things that the Greek could be translated into and that and, and how it changes your perspective if a certain word is translated this way instead of that way and that. But all of it means the same thing, but let's put it differently. And I've seen several preachers do this uh, as well. So taking some of the um, strong definitions, looking at verse 4, it, instead of abide, it says, remain in me. And I in you, the branch cannot carry a burden of separation from the mind mm. of Christ unless you remain in the vine. No more can ye unless ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that remaineth in me and I in him, the same will inwardly carry much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man remains not in me, he will be pruned to waste away, and men gather them up and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Mm. If ye remain in me, and my message remains in you, ye shall ask what needs to be resolved. Ye may ask what needs to be resolved and it will be performed in you. It will be performed in you. Does that sound like asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find? Mm -hmm. Jesus loves to reiterate things through his word in different ways. You learn that as a teacher. You know, many of you might not know this, but I actually went to school to become a teacher and my degrees in education. And one of the things that we had learned is to, to reiterate things in different phrasing so that if one, if one student are, are having, is having a problem understanding the way that you're presenting it, you rephrase it in a different way and you get on, on their level. Just like we have to know our audience as teachers, and you guys have been told this in case I'm correct, know your audience and know what you're doing. You need to do the same thing for yourself. Hmm. Know who you are and what you need. And Amen. God can show you what you need from his word. Amen. So the reason we call it a, transform a transformation is because we aren't born abiding in Christ. Right. If you look at the behavior of small children, you can see <laughs> that they are in their <laughs> flesh. Because yes. when they're born, they oh, are 100%. Yes. In their flesh. So it's a transformation because it requires a change. In fact, I've read materials that say around age six is the age of reason where you can actually start to have them understand um, things. If not the word, then at least how things work from day to day. So how, how can we abide in Christ and allow this transformation to take place? Because it's not natural to us in our flesh. 
So if you want to turn to uh, James chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. It's James 4, 6 through 8. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So what do we need to do to, and that draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh unto you is very similar to our theme scripture. We get close to him, he gets close to us. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that we can take out of the scripture that we need to do? Well, as pastor often says, we can't afford to have God resist us. So we can't be proud. Humility is, is a big part of our transformation to abide with Christ. And su to submit ourselves to God is to be in obedience to him and read the word and understand what that obedience consists of and listen to his voice. And resist the devil, so resist the temptations that the enemy brings to you on a, on a daily basis. And let's turn to 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 through 17. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So another translation of the word that's translated as abide is to dwell. So it talks again about us dwelling in him and him dwelling in us. And us having boldness and confessing that Jesus is the son of God. So we have to share this. Pastor was talking about this before the teaching. We need to share this with other people, that God is our savior. And we need to believe they, that he is our savior in order for us to be able to abide with him and learn all the things that he outlines in his word, which as Robert said, is, is our handbook. And then let's go on to 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. That's 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So another huge component of us abiding in Christ is how we show our love for one another, how we show that fruit, how we give those put those uh, gifts, that how the fruit naturally grows on us and, and the delicious apple, which made me hungry. Um, <laughs> to, to have the fruit grow and to people clearly see that we believe in Jesus and we believe he is the son of God and that he is our savior and that we can share that fruit with them. And this also mentions dwelling, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Again, dwell is another one of the meanings of the word abide, and it talks again about him dwelling in us and us in him. And let's, and let's move on to Matthew uh, chapter 22, verses 36 through 39. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all my, thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So this, again, is the commandment for us to love one another and to provide that fruit to others. One of the greatest things that we need to remember is that we have to love one another. And this means that we have to also learn how to speak in love and through the love of Christ that dwells within us. That's right. Right? Because we, we had said that, uh, we, we know that, that it is the heart, and you know, we're talking about this heart. Sometimes we speak through it, and it's not a good thing. 
because we're angry and we say things that we're not supposed to say. Mm -hmm. But we need to remember that we have the mind of Christ within us. Amen. And so we can tap into that anytime we want to because he allows us to do so, so that we can love one another. And so through the Holy Ghost, then you have Jesus living in you, and he can do so much more if we just surrender ourselves over to him in every way. Uh, let, uh, let's look at Hebrews 13. Um, again, that's Hebrews 13. I'm going to look at verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness uh -huh. and be content with such things as ye have. Mm -hmm. For he yes. has said, I will never leave you, leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that ye may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, mm -hmm. right. and I will not fear mm -hmm. what man shall do unto me. Mm -hmm. Now we see here that it just it says that he it's never going to forsake us. Right. Right. Another way to to say that is that he's never going to leave us. Right. He's never. And it means also that he's never going to give up on you. Right. He's yeah. never going to give up on That's you. Right, I can tell you stories of how many times I've walked away from him mm -hmm. and the church and the things that I've been taught. But he has never left me Alex. nor Amen. forsaken me. Thank you. And that word forsaken also can be trans translated into leave helpless. Mm -hmm. He will never leave you helpless. He will always be your helper. And it says it right there in there. The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So we can't think about the things in our past. We've been told this before. Don't think about your past right. and all the wrongs that were done to you right. because of a church hurting you or somebody at that church hurting you mm -hmm. because man cannot hurt you because you have the living God living with inside of you. And you can, as we've learned before, through a year that we had, the year of letting go, we have to continue to let some of that go, don't we? Because sometimes we take it back up. So we need to let go of it constantly. It's the moment that it sneaks up in your mind and you start dwelling on that is when you get yourself into trouble. And that's when you need to rebuke it in Jesus' name and get that under the obedience of Christ, right. that Amen. thought Amen. process, so that, so you remember this, God is always going to be there for us, because he abides within us, he will always remain within us, and take care of us according to his will for our lives. Right. One key thing I want to bring out in that scripture that Brother Robert said, it says, he will never leave. Right. It doesn't say that we <laughs> will never leave. Well, right. mm -hmm. We have to choose to abide in right. him. You have to make that conscious decision day after day, minute after minute, right. sometimes second right. after second right. um, in those conversations because we live in the world. Mm -hmm. We don't live with him yet. Right. Can't wait for that day. Oh. But right. until we get there, <laughs> yep. we have to choose to abide. Hallelujah. And oftentimes that means that we need to abide when it's inconvenient, Amen. when we're in the fire, well. when we're being consumed Amen. by all of the thoughts and everything going on in this world. But there's a pr purpose for that. It strengthens us. It shows us that promise in Hebrews that he will never leave us helpless, but he's still going to teach us to go yeah. through some things, yeah, that's right. to strengthen our armor, to, right. to sharpen our swords by that iron. And we see that in 1 Peter 1 and verse 7. It says that the trial of your faith yeah. being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I know I'm looking for that day when Jesus appears and calls oh, me yeah. home. And that's exactly what we're promised. That when we go through that fire, when we abide in that fire mm -hmm. and we are refined, we're found unto that praise, honor, glory. I don't know about you, but I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to hear, well done, that good and faithful yeah, service. Thanks. In order for us yeah. to be good and faithful, you have to choose to abide Hallelujah. in those times. Yeah. You have to choose to go through that. Yes. And we see that 
with the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. They had to choose to step into that. Um, I find it awestruck. It hit me a different way that in verse 20, looking at Daniel chapter 3, uh, going through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going into that. First off, the fire was seven times hotter than the normal yeah. instance That's right. because of the anointing that that man wanted to make. He saw their anointing. He saw their decision to sit and abide in what mm -hmm. God had called him to. So he's like, I'm going to make a show out of this. I'm going to turn it up seven times hotter. Okay. For that refining to show the people that my power is that mm. but god had different plans <laughs> and then when they stepped in they were bound by hand and foot and all of their other garments were cast into the fire and in verse 22 it says therefore because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot the flames of the fire slew those men that took them up took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So yeah. the people that were holding them down and about uh -huh. to push them in, those people got consumed. Yes, they did. But the people that actually uh -huh. uh, chose to step in with God's anointing and God's mm -hmm. power and started abiding in the fire were not even touched. Uh -huh. Not even a hair on their body right. was singed. Right. So oftentimes when we're going through those trials, we see everybody else's destruction. So we think that we're going to be destroyed. Right. That's good. My, I, my coworker just went through this exact same thing and everything went wrong. Come on. She was utterly destroyed because of X, Y, and Z, no matter what the circumstance is. Right. But you have to look up and say, I have God. I have that anointing yes. to walk through the yes. fire, Ooh. to abide yeah, with him, on. that not even a Bring hair it. on my head will be singed. Hallelujah. Going through that uh, fiery trial and test just like pastor said before we even started thank him for it thank mm -hmm. you for refining yeah. Yeah. me getting that impurity out so that when you call me up i'm found with honor i'm found with glory i'm found with that purity that you have called me for mm. that fiery furnace is used for something it's used to refine us yes. it's used for the victory to come right amen and it's also used as a tactic to tear down the authority of the enemy. Right. Because when you've walked through that fire, that trial before, you know, okay, you're coming back at me. I've already went through this. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. I've already had that. I have Amen. that battle Amen. scar. I'm going through it again, and I'm going to be victorious you. again. Mm -hmm. It becomes something, a tool that you can use against the enemy. You can yeah, turn right. around and use it. And that's what I thank him for. I thank him for that because every time I go through a trial, I get a new tool. I get yeah. a new tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get a new battle plan mm -hmm. that says, okay, I can go now this route again. It might have been muddy the first time, but I know the victory. I know that exact escape, escape route to know exactly Come what's on. going on. Mm -hmm. I know the path I need to walk through. Devil, you can't touch me. Yeah. You can't yeah. touch me with this yeah. because yeah. I abide in him. Mm -hmm. I choose that daily to abide in him because the fire doesn't, Sin, just hair on my head. And oftentimes I heard this analogy that blew my mind, and I hope it blows your guys' mind. <laughs> so it's a, the analogy of a tea bag. So there, for most people who drink tea, if you've ever drank a cup of tea, uh, there's two ways that people make it. First off are the dippers. Mm -hmm. The people that put the bag in, lift it up again, put it back in, lift up, thinking that they're going to make the change happen faster. <laughs> because they're just in there, okay, if I do it, the water's moving, it's going to cup happen hap faster. I just have to keep going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And oftentimes, if you're a dipper, you don't only have to go up and down. Then you have to get a spoon. Then you have to wrap it, the string around it. Then you have to press your finger in to try to squeeze all of the juices out to make sure that gets in. It takes a lot of work. Okay. It takes a lot of work. Yes, it does. You're stepping in and out of the hot water. You're going hot and cold. You're wishy-washy. You're Ooh, maybe come to church. You maybe on. not come, come to on. church. Your, your faithfulness is yeah, lacking yeah, yeah. in that situation. Yes. The second one, this is how I drink tea. All right. I open the bag and I drop it in. Yes. <laughs> and I leave it alone. Yep. I drop it in, maybe give it three to five minutes, allow that transformation to happen. Ooh. The water flows through the bat tea bag. The tea bag flows through the water, and it occurs because hot water and the tea bag were made for each other. Come on, Greg. Us 
and Christ were made for each yes. other. Hallelujah. The hot water creates that transformation that happens. That fiery mm. furnace creates that transformation to happen. Mm. And if you hang out long enough, the change is going to come. Hallelujah. Right. If you've ever come made on. a bag of tea, no matter what's going on, <laughs> even if you show up five hours later, that transformation All right. happened. All right. Yes. All right. All right. And people think if you're a dipper, yes, you're, if you play around in the waters, eventually you're going to drop dip in. Maybe you maybe get back out. Mm. Those E and C Christians, yes, they come, they experience God, but the transformation is never going to happen right. until they choose to abide right. in Christ. Mm-hmm. And cho- until they choose to come week after week saying, right. I'm making that decision to mm-hmm. abide in the house of in God until house. my yeah. transformation yeah. comes, until mm-hmm. my transformation right. comes. Amen. And when you think about tea, the temperature also matters as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. The hotter the water, yes. mm-hmm. the quicker the transformation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Sounds to me Ooh. like Philadelphia and Laodicea. Yeah. Right. The hot water on lo- on fire for God, in yes. love with someone, Ooh. in love with him, in love mm. with his people. Brotherly oh love God. is expounding within him. That's the hot water. Uh-huh. Yes. That's the hot Thank water God. that consumes Everything it touches, it consumes. Whether you're a coffee drinker, it consumes that too. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> if you've ever made cold brew, <laughs> if you've ever made a pot of coffee, pot of tea, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. that pot of coffee is instantaneous. Yeah, it just has to go through that mechanism, and then it's done. Those people that drink cold brew, yes, it's delicious. Yes, it's good, <laughs> but it takes a while. It takes a while. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Robert. Yeah. Forty yeah. times yeah. longer. <laughs> It takes 40 times longer than the cup of coffee that that brews in your machine. That's exactly how we need to be with God. If you're lukewarm with God, that transformation is never going to happen. It's going to take a long time. You're going to hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because you chose not to get on the fire. You chose not to abide in the fire to allow you to heat up. Mm-hmm. Allow that transformation to happen. Mm-hmm. You must pursue a relationship right. to abide. Right. You, you must pursue you. a relationship right. to abide. And we see that in Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Yes. With all your heart. Yeah. Yeah, not just right. when it's convenient. Not right. just when I have an extra two minutes. Uh-huh. But with all your heart. Right. Mm-hmm. Moment by moment. Second by second. Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be a huge production. But you can always have a conversation with God. You can That's always right. be in communication right. with God. Mm-hmm. And we see that in Psalms 63.1. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek <laughs> thee. My soul thirsteth for thee my flesh longeth for thee it in a dry and thirsty land where there Mm. where no water is Mm. if you've ever ran a mile or anything like that you know the longing and the thirsting just for that Mm. sip of water i haven't had it for the last mile but i know the water's coming at the end that's exactly how we have to approach our abiding with god to long and thirst Mm. for that transformation to happen Now, God wants us to seek him, and throughout his word, he tells us this fact. He told them in the Old Testament, he tells us in the New Testament, that we have to seek him. One of the scriptures that we hold dear to us is Matthew 6, 33, which basically says that we have to seek him, seek his kingdom, and then he will provide for us. That is the important thing is we have to do some seeking. Right. In 2 John 1 and 9, that's 2 John 1 and 9, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ <clears throat> hath not God. Mm-hmm. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Now, in this passage of Scripture, it, it, it is saying that if we do not remain in the teaching, that's what a doctrine is, if we don't remain in the teachings mm-hmm. that he has for us in his word, 
He has for us in Bible studies like this. He has for us even over the pulpit because, you know, we might be preached at and given wonderful guidance through that, that preaching. We also learn something through that preaching, don't we? We learn what God expects of us mm-hmm. and that. So we have to make sure that we listen to God and not to yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. However, if you remain in the teaching of Christ, meaning to follow them, those teachings, you have Christ. Listen, you have Christ, the creator that lives within you. He's the creator of the universe. He spoke into existence everything that you see, everything that you see. And if he can do that, can you imagine what he could do in you if he just spoke it? And what that transformation is going to look like in you. Now, Reverend Renee Wilson just told us that wonderful analogy about the bag of tea, Mm -hmm. the tea bags. She always comes up with the greatest analogies, doesn't she? Yes. Just wonderful. Wonderful. But it illustrates what it means for us to abide in his word, which is Christ himself. Mm -hmm. We need to soak ourselves with the word of God. Right. We need that word to envelop us. Right. So that that word is so strong within us and it's so overflowing in us that the waters of the living waters can flow out through us as well. You know, I spoke earlier about, you know, what comes out of this is important to show who you are. As we had said earlier, you know, the, the tree cannot bear invisible fruit. You're going to see it. Right. That's right. And you're going to hear it from somebody as well, what type right. of fruit that they're bearing. Right. And so it is very important that we, we take that scripture and we, because that confirms that if you allow God's word, the Bible, to be planted in you on good ground, to take root and become part of who you are, from that moment forward, you then belong to him. So remaining in obedience to Christ and keeping his word in us at all times requires our attention, as uh, Renee mentioned, minute by minute, even second by second. Right now, in this world, we live in the flesh. And our tendency is to abide in it rather than abiding in the Lord. So in order for us to get ourselves out of the flesh and into abiding with the Lord, we need to immerse ourselves in his word at all times. And we, there are also some other things that we need to do. If we turn to Romans 8, uh, verses 5 through 7, that's Romans 8, 5 through 7. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the scripture tells us we, we need to mind the things of the spirit, not the things of the flesh. And right. that if we mind the things of the flesh, that it is death to us mm-hmm. and is also enmity against God. So we live in our flesh, we're immersed in it right now, but it's the enemy of God, so how do we resolve that? We seek the things of the spirit rather than our flesh in order to abide in God. So in doing this, we have to deny the desires of our flesh and deny those things that the enemy tempts us with. And there's another scripture that reiterates this principle. It's Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. That's Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So walking in the spirit is one of the keys to us getting out of our flesh and abiding in Christ. And in order to to do that we also need to crucify our flesh it's part of this process of getting out of our flesh is to crucify our flesh and it this is not a one and done by any means Mm -hmm. it has to be done daily every minute of every day even like renee said every second of every day 
you're not going to crucify your flesh once and wake up the next morning and it's still crucified. Uh, yeah. You've yeah. got to keep doing it. So Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 to 25. That's Galatians 5, 24 to 25. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So this talks about crucifying the flesh and living in the spirit and walking in the spirit going hand in hand. And Luke 9.23 states, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So we not only need to crucify our flesh, we also need to take up that cross as well as crucifying our flesh. Oftentimes, taking up the cross is, actually not oftentimes, every time <laughs> taking up the cross is stepping into the fear of the Lord. All right. Stepping into that godly fear. And we see the promise of what's on the other side of that. We've had a whole year about learning about what fear is, faith exercise as reverence. But in Proverbs 8, verses 13 through 21, we see the result of that. We see the reward of that. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength by my king's reign or by me king's reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honors are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Mm -hmm. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness and in the midst of my paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. We know that we can't fill our treasures down here on earth, but we need to fill our treasures in heaven. And that's the promise. When you step into the fear of the Lord, God says, I'm going to fill you with treasures. I'm going to fill you overflowing with all of the blessings that will overtake you. You cannot remain in that. And we have riches and righteousness that are durable, that are going to be everlasting, not something that happens right. just in this vapor existence, mm -hmm. but something that lasts in eternity when we choose to abide and step into that fear of the Lord. What was, excuse me, what was that last reference? Uh, Proverbs 8, verses 13 through 21. In the scripture that we just read and Renee just went over, it states that God is understanding and strength. He will lead us into righteousness. We cannot depend on what we think is righteousness, for it is like filthy rags, right. as stated in Isaiah 64, 6. Let's turn to Romans 8, um, or jot down Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. No one can separate us from God. Right. No one can. We right. can run from him. We can ignore him, but no one can separate us from God in right. any way. Amen. I am sure that all of us have stories of how we've walked away from God mm -hmm. in different points in our lives. Whether it was something that somebody did, something that a church did, or something that you even might have done. Thinking, mm -hmm. Oh, God's never going to forgive me for that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God forgives everything. Mm -hmm. If you ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. right. Now, 
some people think that, you know, if we don't trust God, if we don't trust him, that he won't do anything for us. But we know that he's a God worth trusting. Many of us have a lot of different scenarios that we have seen come to life on, you know, those Wednesday night preachings. You know, when we have the time to stand up and testify about what God has done for us and how he has led us through this or he has healed us from that. And it's because God said in his word that we cannot be separated from his love. And because of his love for us, he will always grant us what we ask for. It might not be what you think it is, but when you ask for it, he's going to give you what you need. That's right. And so that's what we need to do. So no matter what we go through, if we remain in Christ, we are more than conquerors. And all the things mentioned in that scripture that we just read is true. Nothing can separate us from God. Amen. So the word tells us to pray continually. So one of the ways to be close and abide in the Lord is to stay in prayer throughout your day Mm -hmm. and in whatever your situations are and when you have a chance or a few minutes alone or in the car or uh if it if you have time to go to your prayer closet and pray then you can become closer to christ and it helps you abide in him if you keep him with you and on your mind all day long in prayer but if you need to get your day kick started, you, you always want to start with prayer, always, because we all have experienced when we haven't started a day with prayer how it turns out. So there are some simple ways to get it started, uh, some simple scriptures that we can pray in order to get things started on the right foot in the morning so that we can have the kind of day that is filled with Christ and not filled with other chaos. So pray for him to order your steps. So we'll get Amen. Psalm 119, verse 133. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. And one that we talk about often. Ask that he examine your heart. So it's Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you, Jesus. So that helps us get everything started off in a good way, and having the Lord examine you and bring those things to light that you need to be aware of and and address throughout your day and beyond your day. And he he is faithful to us, as always, and he remains close to those who reach out to him in prayer. That's right. Psalm 145, 18 states, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, and to all that call upon him in truth. Amen. And this church is no stranger to prayer. And when praying over this, oftentimes he wants us to go deeper. It's not just surface level. Yes, starting out with our repetition. Oftentimes God wants us to draw in closer. And how I start my day is I read Psalms 91. It's a promise that we all took a hold of in 2020. But it didn't just end in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's something that needs to be part of who you are and that abiding. Because it's making a decision in that. And I'm just going to read the first seven verses. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings that shall thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. That's that promise that when I'm abiding in Christ, nothing 
right. can help me. When I'm walking through that fiery trial, when I'm in that furnace, nothing can touch me. Right. Nothing. Because I can trust in him. He's been faithful from day one and he's going to be faithful till the last day. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. And he says, nothing mm-hmm. shall come nigh thee. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. Thank you, Lord. Love you. Nothing. Mm. And we see that echoed in Psalm 61, verses 1 through 4. It says, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. For from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou shalt thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Mm. Selah. Under his wings is where we need to abide. Not just in a space. He called, he, it's very particular. We have to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, right. in under His wings, because right. mm-hmm. that's where that intimacy happens. That's right. where that transformation can occur. That's when you hear that still small voice whispering mm-hmm. that transformation. When you're in that chrysalis of that transformation, it, happen, it happens in the shade. It happens in those very small places. <laughs> hey, so. What do we do with this information that we've just been given and we've just been talking about? We know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has always brought a detailed description to those who hear him what will, what his will is for them to do. We have given examples of his word and how we must remain in Christ. It is this detail-oriented God who brings order in our lives because he followed, we followed his instructions. Look at what we as a church have experienced throughout the year, this year. Look at where we are today than we were back in January before we heard what this year is going to be all about. Have you changed? Have I changed? I ask myself that question constantly. He has given us these details that he wants us to follow in order that we are to establish those instructions that he's been giving us. And he brings the thoughts to us through the Holy Ghost and through the word of God that we are to abide in him and abide in his will for us. This then translates into an individual transformation that is in his perfect will for us as individuals. Let's continue to listen to his instructions, no matter what that entails, because it is this, it is this which will lead us to abide in Christ. In this year, we seek God's will for our individual transformation. In order for this to be accomplished, we need to remain in him or no transformation will occur.